Gatwick, the busiest single runway airport in the world. 25,000 staff, 120,000 bags a day, 33 million passengers a year. Put your bag on first, put the first one on, that would be good. In the past, Gatwick struggled to cope with all the things that can go wrong and do go wrong. Operating an international airport is an unpredictable business. No, you've got to be on your guard and prepared at all times. But now, Gatwick's under new ownership and undergoing a £1 billion facelift. The aim? To create the best airport in the world. We need to be driving this airport to 45 million passengers uh, off the single runway. Flight control. Check. With new management comes tough talk. We've got to change our business now. We want to remove those failures. There's no accountability, there's no leadership, there's no direction. We don't have time to wait. Put up or shut up. Over the last year, we've been there capturing the highs and the lows as the world's busiest single runway airport gets even busier. Ambulance crew on route, please move to one side. I need to move you around so you're going down this way for us, please. Conflicting views as to where we're supposed to go, huge queues, nowhere to sit now. Fundamentally, something's wrong. It failed, it's the second time it's failed in a week. You're responsible, yeah. Coming up... In terms of international terrorism, the Al-Qaeda-inspired type of threat is always a risk. We want to make this airport a hostile environment to terrorists. In the South Terminal, there's trouble at check-in. <laughs> Can we still go? No. Go Could away! Go away! Gatwick's emergency services are tested to the limit. Just taken details of a, an aircraft crash. Numerous fatalities, still waiting for confirmation on numbers. And senior management discover just how tight security really is. Right. I'm Jeff Williams, head of security. I'm afraid your name isn't here on the list. Ah, oh, if your name's not on the list, you're not coming in. Yeah, that's what I've been instructed, I'm afraid. Winter 2010, and Gatwick Airport is on severe terror alert. Hi, madam, is this yours? Keeping terrorists out and passengers safe is a constant battle for the airport security team. Uh, in uh, June 2010, it was uh, failure to notify change of circuit. In the south terminal, there's been a worrying breach of security at check-in. Uh, I said to him, have you got this sharp and dangerous goods, liquids over 100 mil inside your bag? Um, he said, no, and as he walked off, he turned around and said to me, yeah, I've got guns and pistols in my bag. He didn't say it in a joking way, so it's not funny. Hopefully we can, we can get him. Police and a check-in assistant scout the departure lounge, but fail to find their suspect. We've got a great description, thank you for that, what we do. We, we look, I mean, chances are he's going to be on the Copenhagen flight. Yeah. And what we do, we're catching the gates yeah. and we speak to him and we'll ask him again. Yeah. 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 No, we haven't entered. Right, right from there. He hasn't checked in yet, gentlemen. The staff are fully aware of that he's coming down to the gate. So what we're going to do as soon as he checks on his boarding car. It's a tense wait at departures for Sergeant Darren Taylor. Just before the gate closes, the unsuspecting passenger appears. Take him outside. Pull us outside, please. Out of sight from the other passengers, the man is searched. Come over here, actually, from left to right. Stay that. Perfect. Thank you very much. But no firearms are found. Once a security breach has been intercepted, it's up to the captain of an individual flight to decide whether or not to allow a passenger to fly. Yeah, the captain's refusing in travel. I've got some offloaded. Take you back upstairs. On this occasion, the passenger's out of luck. You need to speak to EasyJet to see if they wouldn't fit on a later flight. They may refuse you passage full stop now. You may find yourself on another airline. OK? When we spoke to him, he said, I may have made comments, but I didn't mean it. I, I just said them in passing. No international airport will tolerate it. And in this day and age, comments like that will see you offloaded. And hence, that's what's happened to him. Um, the ultimate punishment, really. 
At security, an average 85,000 passengers get their bags screened and checked every day. One rogue item is all it would take. We all strive to do our utmost um, to ensure that nothing like that does happen um, and hope that what we do is enough. May I search the bag? Nothing sharp in there. Post 9-11, Gatwick struggled to cope with the heightened security measures that followed. Complaints reached an all-time high as passengers faced hour-long queues in outdated facilities. They just looked very tired, very basic, and not very bright. I mean, they had carpets in a central search area and kept getting flea bites all the time. What you used to do before you search, you used to do a Gatwick stamp and stamp around to get, try and get all the bugs out. It's a pressing problem for the airport's new management. Drafted in to sort it out is Jeff Williams, former Deputy Chief Constable of Sussex Police. I think it was a sizeable challenge. Uh, I think the service wasn't as good as it could be, absolutely. Queues were too long, people could queue up to an hour at times for security. Worse for Gatwick's finances, while passengers were queuing, they weren't spending. The new head of security has been given £45 million to revolutionise the entire operation. People who travel through Gatwick and um, written to me saying, why is it I queue up and then you say, pop out and follow these blue dots on the ceiling and go up some other stairs and escalator. Absolutely mad. But that's the way it's grown up over the years. Jeff's been in the role for almost two years. Work has begun setting out the new security area. If you're really clever, you'll spot the tape on the floor, which is where all new areas are going to be built for new escalators travelling up, new lifts. What I think I need to do is get shares in the company that makes sticky tape. So if you look at the floor area and the ceiling uh, up here, this is where a new escalator is going to go up, and this will be the new um, security search area. And see how we've taken all the ceiling out here, put up temporary hoarding. 26,000 square metres of waiting areas and retail space has been cleared for Jeff's ambitious plans. But with change comes disruption. And I know it's inconvenient for the passengers at the moment with the hoardings going up, but the end product's going to be worth it at the end of the day. The extensive work is predicted to take a year. Some passengers, however, aren't sharing Jeff's enthusiasm. It just looks a mess, so we, d we don't quite know what they're doing behind the, the boards and everything. OK, could be great, but how long will it take? Yeah. And will it be better? And I just feel sorry, because we've lived here a long time, years ago, and it was lovely. Gatwick was great, so it's sad, really. It's a shame, really. Keeping watch on passengers as building work goes on around the airport is an added pressure for security staff. Thank you. 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year, millions of travellers are monitored by over 2,000 CCTV cameras. Gatwick's control centre is one of the most security sensitive areas on site. With the eyes and ears of the airports, we try and be proactive rather than reactive, so we try and stop things from happening before they actually happen. I've seen a couple of suicide jumpers, a couple of heart attack victims, medical calls of people falling down escalators. We had this fight. Basically, a member of staff and a passenger got into a little altercation and end up picking one of the big, heavy tensor barrier and just chasing <laughs> the guy down to check in with it. But the screener's real job is to search out the unexpected. The main threat to the airport is obviously your terrorist attacks, your random nutters or your trained al-Qaeda's. You just never know. These threats are real and... You know, you've got to be on your guard and prepared at all times. You know, even at three in the morning when you're really knackered and you're sitting there going, I want to go home. That's when you've got to be on your guard. Everyone at the airport should remain alert at all times and be prepared. But unfortunately, I'm not sure if it always happens.
Security at the UK's second biggest airport is under a radical review. Delta 4, Delta 4 Central. Just to let you know, we've got a pre-alarm on the Longbridge House. Keeping passengers safe from the threat of global terrorism is a massive operation. The man responsible for 300 security staff, 2,000 CCTV cameras and 20 miles of perimeter fencing is new head of security, Jeff Williams. And the patrols come both sides of this fence, yes. don't they? Air side and land side. How much yeah. the airport actually spends on our safety is highly sensitive information. It is the biggest expense for the airport operator. Uh, the fact that there's a cost to it, well, I wouldn't put a price on one life. Gatwick's managers hate queues. They frustrate passengers, and a passenger waiting in line isn't spending in departures. With new targets to increase passenger numbers by 30%, the airport has to crack queuing times, which can be an hour long. Jeff Williams needs to get security moving fast. We're going to put your bag and take your liquids out, and we're all walking through together. He's been given £45 million to completely rethink the entire operation. We are driving through root and branch every part of the organisation. We're leaving nothing untouched from floor tiles to flights on time, you know, everything is being re-examined, trying to improve it for the passengers and for the airlines. As an ex-officer himself, Jeff works closely with the police to maintain the tightest security. The airport has its own falls, overseen by Superintendent Brian Brasher. It's all about fear. So the terrorists want to cause fear. The fear is far, probably far more important than the, the, the damage. And our number one priority is we want to make this airport a hostile environment to terrorists. Gatwick is, you know, it, it's an icon uh, uh, of the UK. So it's obvious that if someone wanted to make an attack and make it big, that this could be a target they might choose. A total of 95 police walk the airport beat. 12 are community support officers. Oh, it's getting worse. <laughs> but you don't, girl. Alexis Harden and Tracy Smythe have been in the job for two years. Alexis will either be good cop or I'll be bad cop. At the end of it, they always go away smiling. Most of them, anyway. Most of them. <laughs> Community officers are salaried members of the force, trained to provide backup to their fully qualified colleagues. You never, um, never know what's going to happen on a day to day basis. You get as much satisfaction of helping someone who's lost and things like that as, you know, but on the bigger picture, we are an airport, an international airport, and there is threats, you know, on the terrorist side. The security level is obviously very high in that respect. How long have you been in the UK? Three weeks. Three weeks, OK. Does he live out in Portugal? No, Portugal. At Gatwick, their role is to provide a less intimidating face of airport policing, while keeping an eye out for anyone who's acting suspiciously. It's called behaviour assessment screening, and it's basically looking out for signs that people that are lying or, you know, like, for example, their like body language, their, body language, their, reaction to you. their reactions to you. And it's even down to somebody coming into the airport, OK, with an empty rucksack. But the reason why I'm stopping you is because you don't actually look like you're travelling, if I'm honest, no suitcases and things like that. And you get that sixth sense that you don't think that individual has a reason to be here. OK, sir, so have a good day. Bye-bye. It's January 2011, and terror events at Moscow's Damodadavu airport have heightened the tension for Gatwick security staff. Tracy and Alexis might be the friendly faces of the airport, but with the terrorism threat at Severe, they need to be ready for the worst. Golf Oscar from Golf Alpha Papa 18. They're called to a disturbance at check-in, where a group of passengers have been turned away after arriving late for their flight. In the disagreement that ensued, a member of the check-in staff is called evil. That gentleman over there at the front desk right. gave us so much of a headache and we missed the flight. Oh, they're just taking our names in that because we called the guy evil, man. That's it. So you, t you say something nowadays, they're going to call the police and security after you. That's the level of the airports right about now as well. 
so much panic, yeah, any little thing, it's blown out of proportion. Although classified as a minor disturbance, armed officers keep an eye on events from a safe distance. No problem, no problem. We've come, we're three minutes late. We've informed the EasyJet helpline that Customer we're going to be about two, three minutes late because a child in the car that was coming up had a fit. Who was so flying to Geneva at the same time as we was flying to Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. We've informed the helpline, can we still go? No. Go away. Mean? Go away. He I said. He said a child who had a fit is no concern of his. So if I told him my mother has just died, yeah, would he say, yeah, whatever, that's all right, it? No condolences or anything like that. So what are you planning to do? Get out of it. Right, where are you going to head? Right, so you're going to go on with travel now to Luton, He's yeah? the big boy. He's got the marksman hat on. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you're going to go and yeah, travel? Yeah, we're going. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. You know, like as you saw my colleagues, some of my colleagues coming in to back us up, people kind of get a bit intimidated with guns and everything, but whereas we are commute support officers, we don't have that. we just got to have our talents to speak to people and bring people's temp tempers down. It's Sunday. I love you, love you, and words can say. I love you. <laughs> And as the country takes a day off, it's business as usual all over Gatwick. We may praise and glorify you forever, the body of Christ which was given for you. Got aircraft accident. Got four shot one four five. Uh, this is a Comex. Uh, just taken details of a an aircraft accident. An aircraft crash. Uh, the location of which is given as the east side of the railway line. Can I ask you to make for the scene? Go down at 5 thank you. Gatwick's emergency services are about to be put to the test. In 2010, there were 26 major air crashes worldwide. We are just copied. Can you have any update on persons on board? Fire one in attendance. Numerous fatalities, still waiting for confirmation on numbers. In reality, today's emergency is a meticulously orchestrated training exercise. Right, I've got a P2 strap, so I'm going to have to get on the radio. They're also... It's been 12 months in the planning. 200 locals and staff have been drafted in to take part. But for Jeff Williams, Gatwick's head of security, it's more than just a drill. It's highly like if there were a major, major incident at Gatwick. The eyes of the world will be upon you within minutes. Something like this could happen. We hope it doesn't, but it could happen, and we expect to be at our very best. Every 18 months, UK airports must undergo full-scale security exercises by law. If they fail, flights will be grounded. We're about to cut cover cables. We're about to lift the seats off. All of the support structures are now in place. The immediate response is already happening pretty quick, from what we can see. Gatwick's performance is being assessed by the Civil Aviation Authority, the country's airport regulator. I think it's good, it's absolutely right that we are tested, inspected, examined, and it's the opportunity for us to show that we are um, fully prepared. For the head of security, failure isn't an option. Emergency exercise over. An anxious Jeff Williams is about to find out if Gatwick's done enough to retain its operating license from CAA inspector Graham Bartlett. In every area I visited, I think we could say there is some learning. But it's also true to say that I saw some really good practices. We uh, recognise that this has been an effective test of the emergency plan and it does meet with the requirements. I am able to leave here today and say um, there is a tick in the box, so well done to all the airport staff and managers. You've done a really good job and helped us be even better. We're going to keep our licence, which is pretty good. Everything you say we will log, we will work on, and that may well help a passenger in the future, and uh, hopefully it will never happen. Thank you. Thankfully, since I've been here, there's been nothing major for Gatwick. doesn't mean we're complacent. In terms of international terrorism, um, the Al-Qaeda-inspired type of threat is always a risk. So all of the things we have in place are all there to try and help 
make sure we, we do our level best to, to stay one step ahead of the terrorist. Gatwick employs a sophisticated security operation in a bid to keep the airport safe. Madam, just like to come over to the table, won't be a second. Just going to do a very quick test with your liquids, OK? Ultimately, the airport is responsible for the safety of 33 million passengers a year. It's a massive undertaking. Patrolling police officers, um, there is a regime around the searching and screening of people and baggage going onto aircraft, CCTV, uh, all of these layers of the onion, if you like, are all part of keeping people safe on the aircraft. Gatwick's control centre sees it all. Can you do a free offer in the village, please? The biggest global threat to airports is terrorism, but the screeners aren't only on the lookout for suspicious characters. Been here about five years, got lots of stories. Fire alarms can be every day. They say it's quite rare for a car to actually catch fire like that. Imagine the heat in that. But this did so much damage, not just yeah, the vehicles, so but because the heat was so yeah, hot, it melted the tarmac. Sometimes, however, the team get to see much more than they bargained for. Despite there being 500 toilets on site, some passengers become somewhat creative when caught short. There's poo in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> That's outrageous. <laughs> didn't even wipe his bottom. Gatwick's management are ambitious. They want passenger numbers up from 33 million a year to 45 million. What that will mean for security is more staff in every department. 12 new firearms officers are being trained at a top secret location. They've all given up regular police jobs to endure one of the toughest courses in the force. Weapons position and calling it something else and having it slightly different. You can rack the weapon three times. Deciding who will pass and who will fail lies with course instructor PC Adam Waller. We start to deliberately increase the pressure on them because it's important that we know they can um, respond to that pressure and deal with it. The pressure only goes up. Uh, One trainee who knows all about the challenges ahead is 44-year-old dad of three, Amit Yapajurs. Five rounds for a group in your own time. For me personally, um, when I decided that I wanted to be a police officer, one of my main drivers was to protect and serve and uh, being a firearms officer just allows me to do that. Ahmet's been a policeman for eight years. It's a lifelong ambition to become a firearms officer. Keep covering the target till it goes away then... Ahmet has attempted the course before but didn't make the grade. When you're told you're not competent it, it's almost worse than being told you failed. You feel like that, you know you, you've let a lot of people down. With only two attempts permitted it's Ahmed's last chance to achieve his dream. The, the fact that they've said, we, we feel that you can pass this and, you know, we'd like to give you another shot, just puts that little bit more pressure on you. Change the magazines, over. The seven-week course is demanding. The officers will be trained to use a variety of weapons and must prove that they are mentally and physically ready. Safeties! Change the magazines, over. If successful, the trainees will be trusted to carry and, in worst-case scenarios, use a firearm at Gatwick. On average, 30% of trainees fail, but Ahmet believes this time he's ready for the challenge. We are going to be those people that are willing to stand between the general public and the terrorists. If we haven't had a chance to speak to family, now would be the time for us to uh, have a good long think about it. As a firearms officer, you're actually meeting with a, a, a lethal threat, and that lethal threat could uh, be the end of your life. In the past, criticism of security waiting times has topped the list of complaints. We hate queues is the new management mantra. 
head of security, Jeff Williams, has got to sort it out. His solution is state-of-the-art security screening. Well, you'll see some pictures here of our new South Thermal Security Area. These areas here are preparation pods, um, affectionately called Sputnik, because we think it looks like...